Well, with Season 3 over, You're the Worst explores new ground and more emotional territory than ever in its most experimental season yet. I'm gonna leave you anyway. I'm gonna leave you anyway. Hey guys, it's coming in the my review, the season of You're the Worst, and yes, finally, the season has ended, and again, just like American Horror Story, it feels very quick that the show ended, just like Atlanta ended very quickly, which I will review that at some point, I don't know when, but I'll get to that at some point, but as you guys know, You're the Worst was one of my favorite shows of last year, I was very happy to see how great of a show it was, and season two, uh, I think, just took the show in a whole new direction that it didn't really explore in season one. It made the characters more interesting. It gave us more things to root for. And just in general was a very realistic depiction of something like a mental illness. And uh, the way things end off in season two, I was just very impressive. And from then on, I said, okay, this is probably the most realistic portrayal of a romance I've seen on TV. So naturally, I was very excited for season three. I was very excited, you know, seeing how they were going to explore things this season, especially after, you know, things were different. And I have to say that this is definitely the most fundamentally different season of You're the Worst, but it does not mean that it is the best, because in my opinion, this is actually my least favorite season of the show so far. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a great season. I don't think this is a bad season. There are some truly great great things about it, but in terms of the show overall, this is not up to par with the first two seasons, in my opinion. There are some things that are definitely on point, but as a whole, I just didn't really click and connect with this season in the way I did with the first two. I still really liked it, but I will, I'll get into what I like and what I didn't like, uh, but we'll just get right into it. Starting off with, uh, all the main arcs, which basically there are three big plots going on all season that, uh, all revolve around couples. This is a much different season in the sense that we focus on, you know, uh, our four characters, but also how their the relations with their significant others are in a way the show hasn't really done before, and I think it's probably the most character focused season in terms of that. Like, definitely in terms of character dynamics, oh yeah, this is definitely the most focused with that, you know. We have Jimmy and Gretchen, we have Paul and Lindsay, who just recently gotten back together, and uh, then we have... Uh, Dorothy and Vernon and their whole relationship. So we really do get, do a good job of focusing on those two relationships. But first, we're going to get into the main stuff, starting off with Gretchen and Jimmy. So Gretchen and Jimmy this season is a lot different than things are in the first two because their dynamic is a lot closer. Now that they've said those three words together, you know, to each other, I love you, they feel a lot more like they need to be like a couple. They can't just be very casual. They can't just have sex. They can't leave. And that's something that they don't really know if they're ready to do. And I love the way the first episode starts. The first episode of the season is one of my favorites. I really did love pretty much everything about the first episode of this season. Uh, I think it was a very well done episode overall. Uh, but the way it starts off, we see, and especially for Jimmy and Gretchen, we see right away, they really don't know what to do. In fact, they don't even remember saying it. Gretchen in particular does not remember saying that, uh, well actually no, Jimmy does not remember saying that he loves her. And, uh, this is something that he said, you know, we knew that Jimmy was drunk out of his mind when he said this stuff, and, uh, they were going through, you know, problems and everything, so Gretchen naturally is very upset, you know, she wants to tell Jimmy what's going on, but at the same time, she's not really sure if it actually meant anything to him, if he just said that because he was trying to feel that way with her, you know, we didn't really know if he actually meant that, and I thought overall that was very interesting, uh, that we saw that, you know, that she does, and I think they really did a great job of exploring how those three words really can change an entire relationship, and that's something that you really do see this season. Jimmy and Gretchen feel a need to get closer, they feel a need that they need to be more of a couple, and be closer with each other, and be a little more, um, you know, confrontational about things, and just confide in each other in a way they haven't really before, and that's something I really did love seeing about the season, is the way these two finally are thinking, okay, maybe we need to actually act like a real couple. Not that they didn't last season, but last season we know they were trying to be normal people, and this season they're really not doing that, we definitely see, and I thought that was very interesting. Um, but because of this, Gretchen decides to tell Jimmy a lot of things that he didn't know, many of which he doesn't really know how to take. I can't remember what all of them were, but one of the biggest ones is the fact that she actually speaks fluent in Spanish, surprisingly. She takes him to this, uh, Spanish seminar or something like that. I don't remember if it was a restaurant or seminar, but either way, she's able to speak Spanish perfectly, and, uh, 
basically, you know, they get to learn things about each other and the way that, that was done. I thought overall that was very interesting to see. But at the end, they essentially realize that they'll get to I love you. They don't have to say it right now. They have time to say I love you. And I thought it was just a really good way of showing that while these two are together, they don't need to go that far into their relationship. But I think this really sets up how different their relationship is all season. Like I said, they're just much closer, and we definitely see that throughout the entire season. But episode two really starts one of the biggest arcs of this season, which are two things. First of all, we see um, Jimmy. He's much more focused on completing his book. He's a lot more confident about himself. You know, he feels like he really wants to do a good job with this book, and uh, He's doing whatever he can to submit this book. You know, he wants to submit it, and he wants to complete it, and we definitely do see that. And he gives Gretchen this chore of opening the mail in episode 2, which is something that Gretchen decides to do for herself, because as we know, Gretchen went through depression last season, and she is in fact trying to improve herself. She's trying to get help. She's actually trying to get therapy, and that's something that I was very impressed with. I was happy to see Gretchen actually wanting to turn her life around, actually wanting to get the help from Samira Wiley. But you also get the sense that she's not really taking her all that seriously. I mean, the way that she acts with uh, Samira Wiley's character, which it was great to see. Her. I love seeing Samira Wiley on the show again, who, let me just say, was very, very underused. She's only in about three episodes, and I expect her to be in a lot more. But I found her to be severely underused this season. Um... But she's really not taking her all that seriously. You know, she's kind of just using her for her own benefits. And uh, basically, Gretchen hates opening mail because it's usually like a bad bill or bad news or something like that. So she naturally doesn't really like it. And uh, she see Justina was her name, the therapist. Who uh, I thought it was cool. We did get to see um, Samir Wiley play a straight female, which is something I really wasn't expecting. I thought that she was going to be a lesbian again, but I thought it was cool to see her play something a little bit different here. And Justina basically convinces her to open some mail, and Gretchen later does, but then opening the mail is the worst thing that Gretchen could have possibly done, but also probably the best thing she could have possibly done, because this really shows Jimmy's arc of... Gretchen opening the mail and then realizing that it's actually a note, uh, an obituary, actually newspaper obituary, that Jimmy's dad has actually died. And this is something that Gretchen is obviously very in shock about. It's something that she knows is going to change their relationship, but it's also something she has no idea how to say to Jimmy. Jimmy is in the point now where he wants to call his father because he wants to say, because we know his father always thought, saw him as a failure. You know, his father never thought he'd get anything done. But Jimmy wanted to complete this book. He is going to finish this book, and he's about to call his father. But the second that he's about to do that, Gretchen finds out that his father is dead. And that perfectly sets up the direction for Jimmy that we get into this season. I thought it was just really done over, really well done overall. And then we get into what is by far one of the best episodes of the season with episode 3. So throughout the rest of the season, Jimmy's father's death is a very significant part of the season. It drastically affects Jimmy, and obviously this is something that Gretchen tries to hide from him in the best way that she can because she just doesn't want to ruin things. Not ruin things, I wouldn't say. It's not that she doesn't want to ruin things, but she doesn't really want to... Um, you know, be the one to tell Jimmy. She feels that she shouldn't be the one to do it. She wants to find it on his own. But we see there's this party going on. You know, Jimmy is really excited. We see that he really feels like he's finally completed something. He's ready to tell his dad what he did. And, you know, he's, uh, you know, she breaks the news to Vernon. And I like, not Vernon. She breaks the news to Edgar. I like the way that everyone found out except for Jimmy. And uh, the second that Jimmy was about to call his father and everything, Gretchen has to tell him the hard truth, and the look on Jimmy's face is not necessarily a look of betrayal, it's a look of emptiness, and that's the emptiness that Jimmy holds throughout this entire season. After this scene, Jimmy feels like he lacks purpose. Jimmy feels like he's not doing what he really wants to do, and overall, I think, really fundamentally changes Jimmy's character overall. The problem is, is a very underwritten arc, and that's my main problem with this season, that a lot of the arcs this season are very underwritten, such as this one, because after this episode, we get probably one of the most step-back episodes, one of the most um bizarre step back type of episodes we've had with episode four which most of this episode is Gretchen and Jimmy trying to move on from his dad's death committing some really unfoul acts that really are just there for laughs and there were some good things at the end of this episode with Jimmy you know explaining that he finally knows what he, what he feels and everything he felt freedom because his dad's gone and everything he feels like he doesn't really need to you know, be at, he doesn't need to really support his dad anymore, he doesn't really need to feel like he's a disappointment, now he feels like he 
he's free. Now he feels like he can do what he wants. He doesn't have to do what his dad wants. He doesn't need to have his dad's approval constantly. Um, but it was one of the most bizarre episodes we've had. I thought it was just a very strange episode overall. And the way that things were done here, I just found to be very, very off. Uh, I don't know why they went in the direction they did. And we'll get more into that when we get into the tone, but... Either way, that's where we go in episode four. Now, episode six, we go to the last Sunday fun day, which this was a really cool idea. It is, in fact, the last Sunday fun day. And uh, basically, this is the way that, you know, Gretchen's going to try to help Jimmy. They go on this, like, scavenger hunt of sorts, which it was cool to see. I like the way they went on the scavenger hunt. And uh, basically, you know, we, we start to see what's going on with uh, Gretchen and Jimmy. And Jimmy actually, this actually does get Jimmy to become somewhat happy. At first, as we know, Jimmy wasn't really into Sunday Fun Day, but now he's starting to get into it, and Gretchen can really tell that. And uh, Jimmy sings this song that really Gretchen is surprised to see him sing. But Gretchen realizes after this episode that they really don't need Sunday Fun Day anymore. Not, the, not because of the fact that they just don't want to do it. It's just that they've outgrown it. They've outgrown it. They don't really need it anymore. And that's something that Gretchen very much notices um, in this episode. And I thought overall that was very interesting to see. So things then get back on track, I think, with the next episode, The Only Thing That Helps, which is one of the most uh, real episodes the show has given us in terms of grief. I think they did a really great job of portraying grief in this episode, just the way it was all done, because Jimmy finally gets to accept his father's death. I mean, he realizes a lot of things that he really didn't know before. First of all, he sees, you know, his father's ashes. You know, he gets this delivery. He has his father's ashes. He is the one that's going to hold on to them, and he definitely feels pressure. You can tell. Jimmy definitely feels pressure by having his father's ashes right there. He feels like his father is in his ear telling him what to do, and he just doesn't really know how to deal with all that. Uh, he, but he's very furious, we see. He gets very upset as to what's going on. Uh, so he actually, there's this party, basically, that they end up going to uh, for, you know, uh, for... Ronnie, you know, his daddy wants to give him a proper funeral, and he has this whole speech where he realizes that his dad was actually dying when they last met, and he leaves the house with the ashes, and uh, he tearfully tries to kick container over the gates, and uh, it showers him with all the ashes we see at the end of the episode, but it was just a really good way of giving Jimmy this closure, him finally putting his dad beside him, him wanting to move on, I thought was really well done, I liked the way the episode did that, and I thought it was just a really good, um, set up for what's to come. I really did enjoy it overall. I thought they did a really good job with that, and that was something that I really did enjoy in this episode. The way of trade grief and uh, just everything with Jimmy I thought was very well done. There was everything I wanted to see with him that we didn't really get before, and I really did enjoy overall just some really amazing scenes with that that uh, I absolutely love in terms of Jimmy's dad's death. You know, they really do get into the fact that Jimmy's dad always thought that he was, Ronnie always thought it was a disappointment. Jimmy always felt like he had to support him, and uh, this is something that Jimmy doesn't really have to worry about now because now his dad's gone and I thought it was interesting to see definitely the way that was all done uh I really did love but episode eight uh we see Gretchen's back with Justina and she's basically trying to meddle into her friend's lives just like her mother did with her and uh there's some interesting things in this episode you know you think we're gonna get into Gretchen's mother but we barely do I mean this is something that we really don't have is that Gretchen I feel has an arc but she sort of does and that's mainly because of Jimmy's father's death and she ends up cutting Jimmy's internet off to force him to write because Jimmy just he will not write we don't know why but just something about him he's just not writing and by the end of the episode it seems like he's actually going to abandon it altogether and it's very interesting to see and it's mainly because of the fact that he doesn't really know if he wants to be a writer now this was a very interesting direction we went in the fact that he doesn't really know if he wants to be a writer was this something that he goes on uh Vernon and Becca's podcast who as we know you know Vernon's someone who's usually a very free-spirited guy and always has a lot of fun, but Jimmy actually does get some insight from Vernon. That's mainly the whole idea that Jimmy maybe has been wasting his life. Maybe what Jimmy thought he wanted to do, this is not what he really wanted to do. Maybe he didn't want to become a writer. Maybe this isn't what he wanted. Maybe the only reason he did is to impress his father. And the big question is, what does he really want to do with his life? That's something I thought they really tapped into well in this episode, and that gets us perfectly into episode 10, which is basically Jimmy wanting to move on. He wants to move on. He wants to kind of build this treehouse for himself. Uh, 
basically, I think to cope with what he's going through, we definitely do see he's trying to get inspiration uh, from, you know, by uh, making this treehouse, and he's downing raw eggs, and he's basically trying to be a new man. He's trying to be his own person. He's trying to not be the man his dad wanted him to be, and I thought overall that was uh, very interesting, the way that was done. And this episode, episode 10, it's a little bit silly. I definitely will say that there's a lot of ridiculous things going on here, but I did like seeing the way that he has finally stopped hearing his dad's voice, but through doing this, Jimmy comes out with a very interesting revelation, and that is the idea that Jimmy finally realizes at the end of this episode that maybe everything he's done, he hasn't made the right decision about anything, anything, not, not just, you know, um, not wanting to be a writer, not just, um, you know, his relation with his father, but anything he's done in his life. He feels that he hasn't made a single decision that he actually wanted, and he's really starting to question, is this really what I wanted to do? And that overall was a very interesting direction that the show went in. I really did love that overall, and just seeing him go in these dark directions, that is why I love the show. This is a show that can go from a comedy to a drama in a second, and that is the perfect example of the way they did that here. Most of this episode was really silly with Jimmy and the Treehouse, but they took what could have been a really ridiculous plot, and they made did something more and that's something I think they did really well this season. So then we get to this very interesting thing when now that Jimmy, uh, you know, has realized this, he decides to make a pro-con list of everything that he feels he did right and everything he did wrong, every choice he made, what are the good things about it, what are the bad things about it, and Gretchen wants to do that. Gretchen's actually one of the things that is on his pro-con list because he doesn't know if he made the right decision being with her, and yeah, I mean, Jimmy very much has changed this season. That's something that Jimmy is really starting to realize. He gets a very rude awakening in this scene, but I feel like it makes sense, obviously. I mean, again, this is a choice that he he made when his father was alive and again did he make this choice because he really wanted it or did he just do it to impress his father we don't really know and again that's something I thought was very interesting and Gretchen you know bugs Jimmy to let her see the list but for some reason he does not want her to see the list and Jimmy ends up hiding in his jacket you know there's a reason why uh he doesn't want her to see it and uh Gretchen does eventually get the list from his jacket, but she finds it's a decoy, and she starts writing her own pros and cons list about Jimmy, and, uh, finally, they decide to read each other the list, you know, they, they finally get through it, and I like the way this was done, I like that they finally did read each other the pro-con list, and, Basically, it you know there are two very there are very different things they have on there. You know, there's but the biggest one of all the Gretchen is when Jimmy admits that he can't see himself having kids with her and settling down and having a family. Something that very much affects Gretchen. You know, this is someone who Gretchen sees as her family, and realizing that Jimmy doesn't see her that way obviously very much affects her. And I think it really puts this interesting direction for the rest of the season. Uh, but that is everything that happens until the finale with Jimmy and Gretchen. Really good stuff with them overall a little bit underwritten. I'll get into that when we get into the writing, but now we're going to get into what is by far, in my opinion, the strongest plot of the season, which has to do with Lindsay and Paul. So, Lindsay and Paul this season was something that I was definitely very interested in getting to. As we know, Lindsay realized that she actually did want to be with Paul and that she was actually jealous of him, so they try to be a normal couple. The problem is, we can tell immediately this is not at all what Lindsay wants to be. Paul wants her to be this typical housewife that uh, is doing all these things that Lindsay really doesn't want to do. You know, he wants her to cook, he wants her to clean, and Lindsay is a little bit underwritten this season. I think Lindsay in general seemed to deviate at points from the character. In the first half of the season especially, it felt that way, because as we know, Lindsay wanted commitments. You know, she admitted last season, I want some sort of commitment. I want to do something that I actually stick to in my life. Now, now she has to deal with the fact she actually has chosen to commit to something. Does she actually want to commit to it? And that's a struggle that Lindsay has throughout this entire season, and especially in this first episode with Paul, who, you know, shows Lizzie that he, Lindsay that he's literally giving up all his hobbies, and he throws at his stuff, he vows to only pursue things that they can do together, because he wants to be with her. He wants to be with her full force, he wants to, you know, support uh, the baby and everything. He just wants to be with her in any way he can, and, uh, he actually, we see, uh, I thought it was interesting to see, but Paul basically ends up creating this domestic paradise for Lindsay with pre-planned, pre-portioned gourmet meals, you know, again, he wants to be a typical housewife, but after cutting up some vegetables, she realizes this is not at all what she wants, and she actually stabs him with her kitchen knife, and this is the perfect way of just showing that Lindsay is not at all happy with this life, she very much is not happy with the life he's giving her, and, uh, it's a very good way of setting up how destructive this relationship ends up becoming, because very 
very quickly this becomes very destructive. After this episode, Lindsay really does not care about Paul as much. I mean, she's barely checking on him in episode two. He's very badly hurt. We see he has a very bad wound um, in the stomach, I believe, and she needs her to check on him 24-7, but she just doesn't really do it. In fact, if I remember correctly, he has he, she has Edgar look over him uh, because she can't, she doesn't want to do it herself, and uh, you see very quickly that she really does not feel much for Paul. You know, she thought that maybe she was going to get back into a Paul, but she just never really got that spark back that she thought that she was going to have, and it's sad to see, definitely, but throughout this entire season, Lindsay is just not really... Um, you know, she does not feel she loves Paul, but I really love the arc she has in episode 3, because episode 3, she's desperately telling herself, I like him, I like him, I like him. Like, she does not want to think that she does not want Paul. Why? Because this is something that Lindsay did on her own. This was all her own decision, and this was something that she decided to do for herself. She cannot look herself in the eye and say, I don't like Paul. You know, she wants to say that she loves him when she knows in reality that she really doesn't, and... That was very compelling to see Lindsay go through this eternal struggle of her knowing that she doesn't really like Paul, but trying to act like she does like Paul because, you know, he's in her life and she does kind of feel bad and she is human. I thought overall it was very interesting to see the way that was done. Um, and uh, basically, you know, she's at least impressed because Paul loudly sticks up to her after she's insulted. So it seems like things are going well for Lindsay and Paul. So for the rest of the season, they kind of try to be like a couple. They go to this parent thing where she tries to be a good mother to her child. And uh, she doesn't, you know, because she doesn't want a child to hate her like the way that Jimmy hates his father. So she kind of has a revelation from that. And she and Paul and them join Becca and Vern in this parenting class where Lindsay discovers that she actually does have good motherly instincts, we see. And uh, basically... Basically, we see that this expectant father is opening up to Lindsay about his own experience with second chances, and Lindsay actually takes the chance to kiss the guy we see. So this very well shows us that Lindsay does not really love Paul. Like, maybe she sees him as someone she wants to maybe be raising kids with, but not someone she sees as a love interest. Just not anymore. That's not who Paul is to her, and, uh... Episode 6, I think, is really when we get into it. The fact that Lindsay, um, you know, a lot of the last Sunday Fun Day deals with a lot of things, but Lindsay and Paul is definitely a big part of it, because Paul's actually called in to uh, help with his knowledge of old railroads on the whole, like, you know, on the, on the treasure hunt and everything, and what ends up happening is that Lindsay tells Paul that she does want to be married, stay married, and be a family with their coming child, and then persuades Paul, and, you know, she does want to stay married, she does want to have a family and everything, but it, with one other goal, and that is that she wants to be able to let Paul let her sleep with other men, and obviously, this is something that greatly is affecting Paul. I mean, just think about what she's asking him to do. This is a big deal, definitely, and that's what the rest of the season is. It's Lindsay having sex with these guys in front of Paul, cucking him, as Gretchen calls it. I know that's what's it's called, called cucking, when you literally let someone watch you fuck, and that's exactly what Lindsay's doing. And obviously, this very much is self-destructing Paul. And then the show gives us one of the most ingenious episodes yet that I really could not have seen the show doing at all. So, before we get into that, let me just say very quickly that Lindsay actually does decide to get an abortion. She realizes she doesn't want this child, which is, again, something that she committed to that she realized that she really doesn't want. She doesn't know how to take care of a child. She knows she's not really going to be that great of a mother. And because of Jimmy's death, she really is not ready to have a child. And it was very sad to see. Um, and I love the way that abortion scene was done with her going to the clinic and you know, kind of hesitant. She goes to the clinic. You don't know if she's actually going to get it. She sees this mother who she thinks is trying to tell her, you know, don't get an abortion, don't get an abortion. But the mother tells her to go in and do it. And that's exactly what Lindsay ends up doing. She ends up getting an abortion, which she does not tell Paul about. But this really sets up how destructive the relationship ends up becoming with episode nine, which is one of the most fundamentally different episodes yet, which is actually completely about Vernon and Paul and exploring their relationship. Something that I'm surprised the show really hasn't done before because Vern and Paul feel a lot well Paul especially feels a lot more integral part of the season and you definitely see that in this episode this episode is basically a road trip episode between Vern and Paul but it's really the smaller scenes that really stand out here and especially the scene with Paul where he talks about how you know he reveals to you know Vernon that Lindsay's having sex with other men right in front of him and uh, we get some great stuff with Vernon and Paul because Vernon is feeling kind of the same way as Paul these are two very different people but we see they're very much the same kind of person you know 
know, Vernon actually says that they can take off to Mexico and leave the win behind. He actually is not a huge fan of Becca. In fact, he kind of doesn't really like Becca that much. He always feels like Becca's controlling and that he has to be the way that Becca wants him to be. And he does not want to be that. He wants to be his own person. He feels that Becca is not really someone he wants to be with. He doesn't even really like her that much anymore. But he does not want to get out of that relationship. And that, again, was very realistic the way they portrayed that here. And... I really do like the way the direction that this goes into, where these two actually do end up getting very close because of this, and you, you see that Vernon suggests they actually take off for Mexico and leave the win behind, and Paul actually does agree to this, but then at the last moment, he realizes that he wants a child, and that's something that he wants, he's always wanting, he's always wanted to be a father, he wants to raise a child on his own, and it's so heartbreaking knowing that Lindsay had that abortion in the last episode and that she didn't tell Paul it's that much more effective when Paul is talking about how much he wants a child and that it just very heartbreaking monologue I mean this is really great stuff that I think a lot of this season is missing that I'll get into but I mean this is just really deep stuff getting into Paul's character and uh you know he really doesn't want to leave his child and everything so he actually ends up uh we see you know we, we find out that Vernon actually uh purposely pumped diesel fuel into the car's gas tank uh and basically he admitted to do that because he does not want to return home to becca he actually wanted to get away he took paul on this trip to get away from becca to escape from her because he does not want to get back to that miserable life he's completely miserable he just seems like he's happy he's not really happy in that life and it's sad to see but you really are realizing that we're watching two men who are completely um, uncontent with their life. These are two men who seem like they like what they're doing, and especially in the beginning of the episode, you think, okay, Vernon's someone who's happy with his life, he's going to help Paul and everything, and he's going to help him turn his life around, but you realize that Vernon is just as damaged, and the way the show really got into that I thought was very well handled, not really something I expected him to do at all, and I absolutely love that. I thought overall that was just really interesting to see, and especially when we get to the end of the episode, um, you know, uh, Vernon makes plans to go to San Diego with a good Samaritan motorist. He realizes the bassinet is gone. Thinks about the child and decides to get in the car with Paul instead. Just a really well done episode. The seventh layer. Incredible stuff. One of the best episodes the show has given us. Uh, just some really emotionally very satisfying stuff there. I think it was just really well done overall. And I really do love everything about episode nine. It's it's one of the few. It's, it's really great emotional stuff that, like I said, I think a lot of this season very much is missing. So episode 10, like I said, that is the episode where Lindsay actually does get the abortion. I apologize. Episode 8 was when she decides to get it. Episode 10 is when she actually does go through with it. And she's so happy with her decision to the point where she's kind of at a crossroads. She's in this sheet. We have the scene with Gretchen. They're having drinks. And Lindsay doesn't know what she wants to do next or what she will really do next. She knows that deep down, you know, she really did betray Paul and that they really have no future together after this. But at the same time, she wants to go back to this life. She really doesn't want to turn things around. She really doesn't know if she wants to go back to that life and that is when we get to the absolutely heartbreaking confession episode 11 where a lot of this episode Lindsay is with this uh this basically this um you know she she's with uh this fashion designer, I believe, I think his name was, uh, but this is a guy who, he's there for Shitstain and Jacqueline's wedding, you know, Shitstain, one of, uh, Gretchen's clients, well, someone that Gretchen works for, as we know, she works for that group, and, uh, they go to Shitstain's wedding, and, uh, Gretchen ends up telling Lindsay that she will be broke after divorcing Paul, and that this is a terrible idea, but Lindsay is intent on divorcing him, and she ends up spotting this fashion blogger and follows her around, and we see that throughout the episode, there's just this guilt looming in on Lindsay, and by the end of the episode, she finally reveals everything to Paul, including the fact that she doesn't really love him anymore, the fact she does want to get a divorce, and the fact that she had an abortion, and just the look on Paul's face, knowing that everything that he's wanted in life is gone, and that everything that he's wanted in life is pretty much destroyed, is just absolutely soul-crushing to see. They did an incredible job with that scene overall. I really did feel for Paul in the situation, and they did a really great job with getting us to really feel for him there. Really incredible stuff there. I love the way that scene was done, but it really does change the entire fact fabric of their relation for the final two episodes, and I think it was just, like I said, this was probably the most real, well-realized arc out of the three arcs we had this season. I love pretty much everything about this. I think there were some things that were a bit underwritten, but in the second half, they really did redeem why Lindsay did the things she did, and I think it really did make up in the last few episodes, which are among some of the best stuff that Lindsay's ever had. 
So with Lindsay and Paul, I think, being the best arc of this season, now we're going to get to what I think is not the worst, but I think it is the least focused arc of the season, and that has to do with um, Vernon and Dorothy, because we do very much focus on Vernon and Dorothy, the fact that Vernon and Dorothy, you know, they've now uh, to, are a couple, and it's something that Vernon isn't really happy about we see you know in the first episode he's having performance issues in bed having sex and everything he doesn't really want to have sex we see which i thought was interesting we found that vernon actually is a virgin and that he's never really wanted to have sex he's never really had an emotional connection with a woman and that dorothy is that first connection that he's had with anyone i thought overall that was very interesting to see the way that was done and we found out you know that uh they agree to work it out together, and Edgar actually decides to ditch his medication that he's on. But this is probably the worst thing that Edgar could have done, because from here, Edgar's helping Dorothy moving into her apartment, notices that there are many homeless veterans in that area of town, and he begins helping the veterans and ignoring Dorothy, and you can immediately see where the relationship is headed. I mean, I think at the end of season two, we kind of could tell the relationship was kind of at a crossroads, and I think we definitely do see that this season. Uh... A lot of the season, Edgar is put to the wayside, especially the first half of the season, he's put to the wayside. I think things really do come into form, though, in episode 5, which is entirely, in Edgar's perspective, is a completely different anomaly of a show. I mean, it's not even the same type of show as You're the Worst. This is a thriller. It is. It's a psychological thriller of us getting into Edgar's mind, seeing how unhappy he is, and him basically on his quest for happiness, doing whatever he can to do that, and... You know, we find out that he does, you know, doesn't take his med by, by him not taking his medicine anymore. He's dealing with insomnia, paranoia, anxiety from his PTSD. Every single sound reminds him of something. I mean, it shows that his PTSD has gotten so much worse than it's ever been. And it is one of the best looks in a PTSD I have ever ever seen in any show ever. I mean, the way they did this was just incredible. You honestly felt like you were inside Edgar's head. It was a completely different kind of show. I mean, even scenes that were supposed to be funny in the last episode, they're replayed in the scene, and they're actually somewhat sad, really. I mean, Jimmy and, and Gretchen stream like absolute shit, and Edgar really did nothing wrong, we see. But then we get this incredible scene with Edgar where he's at the VA, he's offered some specialized treatments, but only if he goes back on his medications first, and he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to go back on his medications he knows what it does to him and he doesn't really want that to happen anymore and we get this scene where he meets the student director uh things go really bad for him his car ends up breaking down he runs out of traffic and he meets the student director who actually likes edgar's looks and he gets back to his car later it's about to be taken away on a flatbed truck but the driver recognizes a veteran uh, vet like him and he talks about how he needs him to find something anything to help him deal with the ptsd himself because it's something that edgar really isn't over he's not over this ptsd PTSD. It's something that very much has made Edgar felt empty, and I liked, I love the scene between the driver and Edgar with him saying, look, you know, I know you think this is the end, but it doesn't need to be. Just a really satisfying stuff between those two overall. I love where we went with that, and we end with Edgar actually helping that student director make that silent film, seeing what he decided to do, which is kind of like a Buster Keaton type Charlie Chaplin kind of role, and, uh, Basically, we see Edgar at the end of the episode, he finally is blissing out to his music, uh, you know, the driver had a companion dog and knows a vet who do yoga, and basically he's trying to find a coping mechanism to deal with what he's going through, and overall I thought that was very well done the way the, scene, the, the episode was done, just a very deep look into PTSD, showing what he can do to you, showing how it can mess with your mind, and really showing how Edgar has really never been over it in a way the show really isn't tackled before. Unfortunately, I wish the rest of his arc would be as focused as this was. Because for the rest of the season, we do see Edgar trying to move past what he went through with him, you know, trying to get rid of his PTSD because it's really bad. He wants to get rid of it somehow. He decides to start going on marijuana because he realizes that a marijuana vapor actually neutralizes his PTSD, which is something that he really did not think of. And in the next episode, you know, after Sunday Fun Day, he tries to get it, but obviously it's illegal. So there's not really much he can do about that, uh, obviously because, you know, it's just not really working out and, uh, the rest of this season, uh, Edgar definitely is, is in it, he definitely is, uh, I think definitely, I don't, I don't want to say that Edgar's not in this season, but I don't really think his, his plot is focused on nearly as much as it should be. It really, I think, is until episode 10, where 
we start to see things really going with Edgar and uh, Doug Benson. This guy that he ends up meeting who saw Edgar's Dr. Weed short, which is something that he made when he was high about drugs and everything. It was kind of like a commercial. And he really sees the potential in Edgar. He thinks he's very funny. This is a comedy writer. And Edgar actually does want to work for Doug Benson. We definitely do see that here. And I thought overall that was very interesting to see. And it really did make up in the end for him not having a ton to do. But Edgar tells Dorothy about receiving an offer to write for Benson. She conceals her dismay and uh, she really, you know, we see that uh, Dorothy, she's not exactly happy about it. We definitely do see, and I thought overall that was very interesting to see. And then we get to episode 11, where we see Edgar and Dorothy, and Dorothy seems to not be upset that Edgar did this. It's mainly the fact that she herself really isn't doing much. She's kind of abandoned her life. She's not really doing the improv group a lot. And we get to see, really, that Dorothy is a lot more damaged than Edgar in a way we really didn't see before. But that's not really focused on till episode 12. So this arc does have some going for it. They just barely focused on it. Dorothy really is not in the season as much as I thought she should have been. She honestly should have been a main character. They could have done so much more great stuff with her. But it is made kind of, they do kind of make up for it in episodes 12 and 13, which I'm about to get into. But like I said, this episode, while this show, this plot, while it had, I think, one of the best, or maybe the best episode of the season, Edgar, you know, that episode in Edgar's perspective, which is just incredible stuff overall. Um, I don't really know if this arc was as focused on as it should have been. I think we could have done so much more that I think they could have done a lot more, and it really does get into my main complaint with this season, which I'm about to get into. So before I get into the finale, I just want to talk about a few other things, starting off with the directing, which the directing this season is based on my main problem with this entire season, and that is because... The directing of this season felt very off. The first two seasons, I think the first few episodes of season one were a bit of a rocky start, but as it went on, it had this really good, very meaningful directing and things like that. Season two had so much more with that. The directing was a lot more psychological and got more into these characters. And this season, it kind of seemed like a step back. It seemed like at points, they really didn't realize what made these characters so great. It's not the fact these characters are doing horrible things. It's the reason why they're being destructive. It's the reason why they're acting this way. And that's something that was kind of off to me at points this season. In fact, at points, I think they maybe, maybe, they maybe went a bit too far with these characters this season. Um, in fact, you know, what happened with Gretchen and Jimmy. I mean, there is an episode of this season where Gretchen and Jimmy end up having sex at a cemetery, and it's really just there for laughs, and I think that's something that this season did a little bit too much. It was definitely the funniest season, I will admit that. There were definitely some genuinely hilarious scenes in this season, which season two was definitely more of a drama. It turned into one, and this season definitely got back to the comedy aspect of it, but I don't really know if it needed to do that. I mean, the show works, I think, best as a dramedy with comedic elements, and while the comedy was there in seasons one and two, it's there a lot more this season, and it's funny to see, definitely. It's a funny show, but I think because of how much they focused on the humor, they didn't focus as much on the story, especially with a lot of the main arcs. Like I said, I think Lindsay and Paul's arc was very well written. Just everything about that, I very much felt like that was very well wrapped up. And I think Gretchen's uh, therapy, though, really was not shown in it all the way I wanted them to. They talked about it, but it always felt like it was just getting started. Like, oh, we're getting to that point where Gretchen's moving on, or oh, maybe Gretchen's starting to do things. It never really felt like that arc was really uh, going anywhere. I didn't really know where they were trying to go with it. I understood in the end of the episode, in the end of the finale, but I felt like that arc was very underwritten to me. I think there was some really great stuff they had in there, but they just didn't really focus on it in the way they wanted to. I think that, um, in the beginning of the season, it seemed like Justina was going to be a major part, and they barely had her in the, any episodes. I mean, after episode three, she wasn't in the show again until episode ten, which was really weird to see. I really found it strange, uh, the lack of Justina in these episodes. I expect a lot more with her, and we barely saw her this season. I don't really know why we didn't see her. She was supposed to be Gretchen's therapist, and, you know, Gretchen's uh, depression was arguably the most compelling thing about last season. The fact they barely touched upon it, I really did not understand that at all. I don't know why I didn't really focus on it that much. And even more so, Jimmy's dad dying, I don't really think we really got to focus on as much until the second half of the season. The first half of the season, I was kind of disappointed. I was really frustrated with the first half of the season. To me, it felt like the show was too focused on how do we make the audience laugh, how do we go, you know, further into darkness, and how do we may have these characters make terrible decisions. And that's not good TV. That's not what makes the show so great. What makes the show so great is how the characters are, why they make these bad decisions, you know, why they are the way they are, what they feel about themselves. Episodes like that are what I love about the show. Episodes 4 and episode, you know, uh, episode 8, episodes like that, 
some of the scenes in this in this season, I'm not going to say are unwatchable, but they definitely do feel like a step back. Even from season one, it felt like the season, a lot of episodes, they were much more focused on how do we make these characters funny and a lot less focused on how we make them compelling. And that really put a lot of the arcs to the wayside. Like, for example, Vernon and, and uh, Dorothy's arc, we never really got to focus them much on. I think we could have done a lot more with it. We had that great uh, Vernon-centric episode, but they didn't really build on it from there till about episode 10. And after that, I think it was just a little bit too late. I mean, what they do in the last two episodes are great. Don't get me wrong. But I think we could have had a lot more time to focus on that. And I think it just would have made the season as a whole a lot more satisfying. Now, I will admit that most of my complaints with this season were fixed in the second half. After that episode, um, I, I think after the last Sunday Fun Day, after that episode. Actually, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say it's after the last Sunday Fun I think it's after the episode where Jimmy gets closure that is the episode where I feel like after that, things felt like, okay, now we're back to the You're the Worst I Love. Now I'm now I'm loving the show again. After that, things really stayed consistent. And that I was very happy to see. I really did love the second half of the season. It's just the first half was very drastically different than other stuff we've seen. I was expecting to go in a much different type of direction for this season. And I just felt like they didn't really focus on it as much as they needed to. And that really is my biggest complaint with the season over. Overall. Now, something I definitely do want to command the season on is how drastically different it is from the first two seasons. Like I said in my review, this is the most experimental season of You Are the Worst we've had. I mean, the amount of direction they go with the season is really um, completely just, it's not, it's unpredictable. It really is a very unpredictable season because you'd have an episode that focused on the main four, and then you'd have a completely, um, you know, separate episode with Vern and Paul that feels like a completely different show. And the way they did that, I thought was really really cool. I don't see a lot of shows do that a lot. I mean, The Leftovers did that, but I see a lot of Netflix shows do that. I don't see a lot of shows on TV do that, and that's mainly because, you know, oh, we have to keep up with a formula. You know, a lot of shows have standards, and they don't want to do that, and the fact that you the worst did that here, I thought was really cool. It showed that they really do understand their characters really well, and when you give them very minimal stuff and not a lot to work with, these characters are very, very interesting once you strip a lot of things down, and that's something they did very well. Both Vernon and Paul and, and, and Paul and Vernon's episode are some of the best the show has ever had. I loved everything about those two episodes. I think they were fantastic, and even more so than that, episode 11, let me just say, is completely one takes. It's it's incredible. The way that episode was done, almost every scene you see in that episode is completely unedited takes done with a steady cam. and I don't know how exactly they got it done as well as they did, but it is amazing the way they did that, and you could definitely tell they had the biggest budget of the season. You could definitely tell they poured a lot of that into the season, and I wouldn't say it felt style over substance, because it definitely did not feel that at all, but a lot of the cinematography looked incredible in the show. I thought just that really did add to the season overall, and that's something I definitely will give the season, how fundamentally different it was from the rest of the season. But ultimately, I do kind of wonder if this season might have benefited more if they had 10 episodes, because... There are a couple episodes in there that I will admit I didn't really see the point of. Not that I didn't see the point of, but I just didn't really think needed to necessarily be there as much as they were. Uh, particularly two episodes. Episode 10 and episode 8 I felt were good episodes. I just didn't really think they really needed to be there. They felt like they were there because, oh, we just needed, you know, this episode here was kind of filler. Uh, especially episode 4. Episode 4 really was very disappointing. I think they could have done a lot more than it. I think the season would have benefited a lot more if it was 10 episodes. 13 worked last season. I don't think 13 worked this season. I think either 10 or 11 episodes would have sued the season a lot more. 13 really did not work out, and I think that really did ruin a lot of why the season didn't work out as well as the first two did. But now we're getting into the finale, which I have a lot to say about this finale. So if you guys have not seen the finale, do not watch the rest of this review. I'm going to go into full spoilers about everything that happened because, wow, was there a lot to talk about. And I have to say that despite the fact, like I said, the season was disappointing, what a great wrap-up. I mean, they really wrapped up everything perfectly. There wasn't really anything that was left unopened, and I was very happy to see that. I mean... This is a great finale, and that's something that You're the Worst always says. They always give us really great finales, and this one might just be their best yet, honestly. Because of how great this episode, both of these episodes were, this might just be their best finale yet. I think everything was wrapped up perfectly, and there really was nothing I would have changed here. But let's get into episode 12, which is primarily the three couples fighting. It's a very interesting look at these three couples, how different they've become, and really how each one of them overcomes their struggles differently, because each one of them 
are fighting. I mean, Gretchen and Jimmy, it's kind of permeating throughout the episode where you see that there's kind of some tension between them, obviously because of events that happened and things that were said and, you know, on pre on the previous nights and things not going as well where Gretchen and Jimmy, he's trying to finish his book and everything and Gretchen, it just isn't really into it. You see, you don't really know what's going on there. But Lindsay is now sleeping at uh, Gretchen and Jimmy's apartment because she just can't be with Paul right now. You know, Paul and her, she doesn't really feel like they have a future together. She's sleeping naked, we see, which is weird to see, which, uh, Heather Donahue, hello, very, very attractive. I said that before. <laughs> but, um, uh... It was nice to see that. I wish they would have shown some nudity, but they didn't. Uh, you know, this is FXX. They can't really do that. But uh, either way, I mean, I, I, I know I know that was a very sexist thing to say, but why not? I mean, Heather Donahue's a very attractive woman. You guys got to agree with me on that. She's definitely very attractive, and it was cool to see her uh, in that scene. But either way, Paul does end up finding her, and uh, Gretchen and Jimmy are so uninterested. Well, not uninterested, but they're so focused on what's going on with themselves that they don't want to deal with, with uh, Paul and uh, Lindsay right now. They tell them to actually take it into their room and fight it. And the scenes we get of these three fighting are very, very compelling because you get why all three of these couples are fighting. You know, um, uh, Dorothy and Vernon are fighting over the fact that Vernon wants to become, you know, wants to work for Doug Benson. He wants to be on comedy, you know, he's coming up with all these ideas, but Dorothy does not seem supportive, and it's mainly because of the fact that Dorothy feels this is all she's going to do, and I thought it was a very interesting way they got into this, with Dorothy talking about the way that she started off, and she felt like she was on top of things, and that this is what she wanted during improv and everything, but now she's realizing that Vern's turning out a lot better than her, and he's doing some much more serious stuff that she wishes she would have done, but instead, she runs an improv group, and she really feels this is as bad as, as good as it's gonna get for her, like, she's not gonna be able to do anything of that caliber, and obviously, she's starting to feel a little bit of, uh, you know, she's starting to get a little bit jealous of Vern, if anything, and I thought it was interesting to see the way that was all executed, I definitely thought it was an interesting way to show that, and I really did love the way that was shown overall, and I think they did a really good job of getting into Lindsay and Paul also showing why those two are very much uh, at odds you know we see that uh, Paul is mad at Lindsay because of the fact of what she said I mean I mean she destroyed his life when he says you ruined my life he means it remember he wanted a child he wanted a family he wanted to commit to Lindsay he gave up his life for Lindsay in the beginning of the season and she completely destroyed it completely I mean there's no way he's gonna get it back his life as he knows it is destroyed and Lindsay does bring up a good point though where he was trying to change her too much. He was trying to make her something she wasn't, and that's why she didn't feel happy with him. These aren't two horrible people. They both have done some really horrible things, but they're not horrible people. They're just two people that can't be together and anymore, and that's something that we definitely do see here, and the way that those two, you know, realized this, I thought it was very well handled. The way that it was definitely very well done. Just like Dorothy and Vernon realized they can't really be together. I think perfectly sets us up for episode 13 when that eventually does go down. And I think that very well ends those two arcs. Not not ends them, but I think is really the climax of everything we've been building to. It's everything we've been wanting to see from these two. We know that these two were going to break up the second that they were introduced, as well as Vern and Edgar. We knew someone was going to have with them. And immediately, the second that Edgar gets the call that Doug Benson is interested, you know that things are really not going to go well with uh, him and Dorothy. And that really sets up what ends up happening in the last episode. But then at the end of the episode, finally we get to see Gretchen and Jimmy fight, and it's as um, crazy as you can think. I mean, Gretchen's really mad at Jimmy because of what he said to her, and the fact that, you know, she feels that he's being very unsupportive, and that he doesn't really care about her as much, and that she's doing all these things for him. You know, she's trying to get the help, she's trying to turn her life around, and he doesn't really seem like he cares as much. You know, he seems much more focused on his father's death, and I like these telling her, look, I'm not over my father's death, I'm still grieving, and you need to understand that. And I think that's something they did so, so well in this episode, is that each couple you really understood both of their viewpoints you understood where they both were coming from you understood what was going on with that and that's something I loved about this episode, that it very much felt like a bottle episode. It was a bunch of characters in a room together, just screaming, but it really was them solving their differences. It was us realizing why these two are so at odds, and I think they did that very, very well. It could have been very tedious, but it works so well here, and I think that really just set us up perfectly for episode 13. Now, you could make the argument that this finale feels more like an epilogue than it does a finale, but I would very much disagree. This finale, while I said that the first act was the climax, Max, this is the resolution, the day new months, if you will, where things are wrapped up and things are really set in motion for next season, and that's exactly how it goes here. I really loved everything about this finale. 
Gretchen and Jimmy in this episode are on some sort of case. We don't really know what that's about. It seemed to have come out of nowhere, but they're on the case for something, some sort of murder case or something. We don't really know what's going on with that. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um... But basically, you know, uh, throughout throughout this, basically, you know, they go through different types of stops, and one of the stops that Gretchen does make is, in fact, Justina. And uh, I love the scene between Gretchen and Justina, where she sees Justina, and uh, basically, we find out the reason why Justina basically tells Gretchen that she doesn't need her anymore, that Gretchen has done everything Justina's told her to do. Gretchen's okay, and I don't know if Gretchen's cured, but she doesn't really need her anymore. That Gretchen, she feels, is on a good track and doesn't really need this therapist. She's going to go move somewhere with her boyfriend, and I thought it was a good way to get rid of this character. Was this an underused character? Oh, yes. Like I said, I feel like they definitely did not give the amount of stuff they could have given to her, but I did like this exit. I thought overall this worked really well. It showed the progress that Gretchen made, and like I said... It's something that they did close out, and it's something that they didn't just leave open, that I'm happy that they did. A lesser show would have done that, but I'm glad that this episode really did wrap everything up very nicely. I thought they did that really well here. Um, but we'll get to the rest of that later, because I want to talk about Lindsay and Paul, because things are very interesting between these two. As we know, uh, Paul basically, at the end of episode 12, told Lindsay, Look, you ruined my life. I'm not going to go easy on you. She wants to get a divorce, and he's going to charge her tons of money for it. And honestly, she deserves it. I mean, the way that she treated him, she very much deserves that. But at the same time, Paul's being as the biggest dick that we've ever seen. I mean, Paul is very much a dick, but I wouldn't say he's out of character. He's just very enraged. I mean, can you really blame him after all the shit he's gone through this season? It's kind of hard to not feel for Paul in this in because, yeah, Paul's gone through a lot of shits, and you can totally understand why Paul is feeling the way he is, and him, you know, being so rude to Lindsay, wanting nothing to do with her, you know, taking all this money, uh, but was even more effective to me is that they do still give Paul some really great emotional stuff to do in this episode. We see there's this great scene where Vernon and Becca have had their baby, which we found out at the end of episode 12, but they go to visit Verna and Becca's baby, Tallulah, and basically we see, you know, Lindsay and Becca talking about how, you know, Lindsay wants to take care of Tallulah and everything, and Paul goes to Vernon, who at this point he thinks that he's on very good terms with. We, you know, that camping trip went really well. It seems they really bonded. But Vernon's now being really, I wouldn't say rude towards Paul. He's just kind of ignoring him, acting like he's not really there, not wanting him in his life. And it's mainly because Vernon isn't ready to let go. While Vernon does want to let go, he's too much, uh, you know, he's too far into his relationship to really let go. He's kind of trapped as well. And uh, just that scene of him saying, Paul, you know, Becca saying, Paul, you're not a part of this family anymore. It's just really sad to see. It's very, very sad. And just knowing that Paul, has lost everything. I mean, it's definitely going to be sad, but I think it probably is going to be the last time we ever see Paul in the show, which I do really love the scene where Paul and Lindsay do, in fact, get the divorce, and there's that great scene with Lindsay where uh, her and Edgar are talking, and, and I like the scene where Lindsay tells Edgar straight out, don't be a martyr, which is basically don't do some, don't be, you know, don't, don't give in to someone just to make them happy, like, do what makes you feel good, and we get that great scene where she's talking with Edgar, Edgar walks away, and Lindsay, for the first time, feels genuinely happy, and it's because she's allowed to make her own choices. No one is telling her what to do. She's doing doing things on her own terms, and I really liked the way that ended up. I thought it was a very well satisfying end for Lindsay. And then as far as Edgar and Dorothy, things go pretty much as we expected. He does get the job. Um, you know, he, he does in fact get the job from uh, Doug Benson. He decides to work with Doug Benson in comedy, and Dorothy ends up leaving. Not because of Edgar, but because she feels she can't really handle this. You know, uh, they can't really be together right now. She wants to get her life together, and it just hasn't really worked out for her. You know, maybe this would have worked before, but now they can't really be together. So, she ends up leaving, but Edgar's now going on to bigger and better things. He finally seems to be over his PTSD. He finally seems like he's genuinely in a good place, and that's something that we really haven't seen on the show before, and I'm looking forward to seeing Edgar genuinely happy next season. But then we get to what you guys really want me to talk about, which is the final scene of this episode, which, in my opinion, is one of the best scenes the show has ever given us. I love everything about this final scene. Jimmy and Gretchen basically have reached their destination in this murder case, and, uh, you know, Gretchen's questioning Jimmy, you know, who was the victim, who was all this, and we realized that there wasn't actually a case, that Jimmy staged all of this to get to a certain place, 
to actually propose to Gretchen. He does. He proposed to her, but he also makes himself sound really, really smart and sophisticated just to show that he really does love her. Oh, I also forgot to say that he did, in fact, complete his book. Like, he got inspiration from her to complete his book, so his book seems to be done as well. And he proposes to her, and she does accept. But then we get to the ending of the episode where Gretchen's talking about how we're not a family, you know, we're not just, uh, we're no longer just us. Like, we are now compatible. We're now, you know, two different different people are now codependent basically and now you have me to replace your father in your life you know you get me from that and Jimmy instead of feeling happy actually walks away in a car very depressed I wouldn't say this is Jimmy regretting proposing to Gretchen it's more of him wondering you know is this really gonna work did I really do the right thing here and am I really ready for marriage you know am I, fu am I fully over my father's death it's just a great way the show loves to question itself it's a great way to show how the show is gonna go on and I think perfectly sets up the next season they do this every single year where they have them say something to each other and it really affects them and you see how deep things are gonna get and I really think that's what we're gonna see next season I think next season is gonna be the season I hope this would have been but it's a very satisfying end to a not to a very uneven season, but I think a very much appreciated one overall. So let me really did not dislike this season. I don't think this was a bad season at all. Uh, I think that this was, in fact, a really good season. It just could have been a lot better. I think if they would have maybe added into some things, you know, maybe focus more on Gretchen getting help or focus more on Jimmy's, Jimmy's dad's death, then we could have had a much more focused season. But there might have been not too much going on. But I think because we had 13 episodes, they definitely did uh, stretch things out a little bit too far. And I think if we would have maybe had 10, we could have had a little bit more to build on and wouldn't have as much to stretch out but overall guys I still love you're the worst you're the worst is still one of my favorite shows on TV at the end of the day I still really do love it I still had a great time watching this season it was funny I still love these characters and it still had some of the most human scenes I've seen some of the best scenes I've seen all year in this episode is this up to the quality of last year oh definitely no in fact this might not this is not gonna even be in my best shows of 2016 I'll tell you that right now it might be an honorable mention but I don't think it's gonna be in my best shows of 2016 but because of how great that second half was I really Really, really was impressed by this season. First half of the season, I was ready to give this a B, but because of how great that second half was, I am going to give You're the Worst Season 3 a 4.5 out of 5 or an A-. minus. Not at all a bad season, just a step down from the previous two. A little bit unfocused, a little bit too long, but overall really did have a very strong end, and that really did make up for the lack of it, the lack of direction and compelling stuff in the first half of the season. But overall, guys, that's it. You're the worst. Season 3 is over. Let me know what you guys thought of the season overall. Loved your thoughts on it. Did you like this season more than I did? Less than I did? Again, I didn't hate the season. I actually, I really did love this season looking back at it, but it's just not nearly as good as the first two is. I think the first two were just a lot better. But that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video. I can't believe you're the worst. It's already over, but I will see you guys next week, which will be for a movie review, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.